Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain Television with Esther Galoom. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa welcomed the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, as he arrived on a brotherly visit to the Kingdom. Also present was His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Amman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King then held a meeting with His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. Present were His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Deputy Chairman of the Executive Office of Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sheikh Hazar bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Zayed bin Sultan Foundation for Charity and Humanitarian Work, His Highness Sheikh Nahyan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Premier and Interior Minister, His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Premier and Minister of Presidential Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and the Under Secretary of the Crown Prince's Court, Mohammed Al Mazrui. His Majesty the King reviewed with Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince the deep rooted brotherly relations and ways of reinforcing them to serve the best interests of both countries and peoples. The meeting also highlighted the need to boost joint coordination and consultation within the framework of the Gulf Cooperation Council to support joint Gulf action and achieve the best interest, progress and prosperity of the people in the face of all challenges. In addition, the meeting discussed regional Arab and international developments as well as issues of common concern. His Majesty the King then held a lunch banquet in honour of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and his accompanying delegation. Following the meeting, His Majesty the King bade farewell to the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and his accompanying delegation upon their departure. Also present was His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Amman bin Hamil Al Khalifa.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, met today with a number of state officials and reviewed with them national issues and government services. The Prime Minister affirmed that the citizen is the government's top priority, stressing that work is ongoing to provide the highest quality services to achieve the people's satisfaction. He said that despite all challenges facing the development process, the government is keen to pursue its projects to achieve the desired outcome. His Royal Highness commended the role of Bahraini families who direct their charity work towards establishing health facilities to support the government's efforts to develop medical and therapeutic services in the kingdom. He also highlighted the vital role of financial and banking institutions in supporting the national economy and creating new job and training opportunities for the people. The Prime Minister stressed that the government is keen to create an economic environment based upon a strong legislative foundation that encourages investments in the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, met today at Gudabir Palace the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed al Mullah, in the presence of MP Adil Abdurrahman al Asumi. His Royal Highness highlighted the Council's strategic role in reinforcing democracy, which is one of the essential pillars of the national project led by His Majesty the King. He explained that the government considers the Representatives Council a strategic partner in national work so as to meet the demands of the people. The Prime Minister commended the constructive cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, which serves the best interests of the homeland and the people. The meeting reviewed issues related to government parliamentary cooperation, as well as the existing coordination between the two authorities. For his part, Mr Al Muller expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support of the legislative and monitoring role of the Representatives Council. And His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received today at Gudabir Palace a delegation representing the people of Dumistan village, led by MP Majid al Majid, in line with His Royal Highness's meetings with local residents. The Prime Minister affirmed the government's keenness to implement the directives of His Majesty the King to increase official visits to all villages and cities to follow up their needs. He affirmed that the government is keen to provide development projects and facilities to all villages and cities, including housing. In this regard, the Prime Minister directed the Housing Ministry to give priority to the area's residents when allocating housing units so as to preserve its social fabric. His Royal Highness also directed the development of infrastructure services in Dumistan village and surrounding areas. He listened to the requests of the people of Dumistan and reviewed with the Ministers of Housing and Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning the completion status of housing and infrastructure projects in several villages. He directed speedy completion of al -Losi and Dumistan housing projects and a start to distribution of these units to the beneficiaries. For their part, the audience thanked His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his care in meeting the needs of the people, commending the open-door policy adopted by His Royal Highness with all citizens. They expressed, expressed pleasure at the imminent distribution of completed housing units and pride in His Royal Highness's follow-up and interest in developing government services and facilities.
The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, met today with the President of the Senate of Jordan, Faisal al Fayez, accompanied by members of the House of Dignitaries currently visiting the Kingdom of Bahrain. Also present was the Defence Affairs Minister, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma. The Commander-in-Chief welcomed the Jordanian delegation, praising the close bilateral ties which are constantly growing in line with the directives of the two leaderships and the shared readiness to boost these ties in the interests of common goals. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and on the Bahraini athlete Oluwakami Adekoya taking the gold medal in the 400 metre race at the World Indoor Athletics Championships. His Highness Sheikh Khalid also congratulated His Majesty the King's representative for charity work and youth affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the occasion. He attributed the achievement to the continued support of the wise leadership and His Highness Sheikh Nasser, saying that this accomplishment reflected Bahrain's status at regional and international levels. He added that this success would incentivize further progress in various upcoming events, especially in the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio. As a member of the Bahrain national jiu-jitsu team, the Bahrain Self-Defense Federation member Abdullah Sina made a historic achievement in the Jiu-Jitsu World Championship in Madrid by coming fourth in the 62 kilogram category. On this occasion, the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, highlighted the fighter's outstanding achievement and hailed the excellent support of his coach. He also congratulated Abdullah for honouring the kingdom in such a major international championship. The Shura Council Speaker Ali Al Saleh chaired today the Council's weekly meeting. The Council approved amending the law provisions of the Central Bank of Bahrain and financial institutions in order to regulate the collection and protection of customers' credit information. The Council then approved amending the free trade agreement between the governments of Bahrain and the United States. The Shura Council Speaker Ali Al Saleh received the President of the Senate of Jordan, Faisal Al Fayez, accompanied by a number of members of the House of Dignitaries currently visiting the Kingdom of Bahrain. Mr Al Saleh and Mr Al Fayez discussed ways of bolstering bilateral cooperation and issues of common interest. Marking Tunisia's Independence Day, the advisor to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, this evening attended the reception hosted by the Tunisian ambassador to Bahrain, Mohammed bin Youssef, at the Diplomat Hotel. Also present were senior government officials and diplomats. Sheikh Salman congratulated the Tunisian government and people, wishing Tunisia continued prosperity and development. He also underlined the excellent and progressing relations between the two countries. For his part, the Tunisian ambassador hailed the distinguished relations between the two countries, noting Bahrain's development in all domains.
The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Matawa, opened the first workshop on the e system for follow up of cabinet decisions, which was held today at His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's Court in the presence of the Cabinet Affairs Secretary General, Dr. Yasser bin Issa Al Nasser, and a number of officials. Mr. Al Matawa affirmed the importance of following up on cabinet decisions in order to achieve the programmes of the government, provide high living standards for citizens, and achieve further progress. The Cabinet Affairs Secretary-General praised His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's directives and keenness to implement decisions, especially those regarding citizens' needs. The e-system covers all 685 decisions made by the Cabinet since November 2014.